This is video number seven from digito-university.org. Um, in this video, we want to consider an example from conditional probability. And just as a reminder, for a lot of the probability videos, we're drawing upon results that we obtained in earlier videos that we um, posted, particularly the different types of combination problems that we solved and the different types of uh, permutation problems that we solved. So if you just found us on YouTube and you're watching some of the uh, probability videos and you hear us referencing the earlier ones and you're not familiar with the techniques that we're referring to, if you can go to the website and then click on Cognitorics and Probability, there you can access all of the uh, uh, earlier videos that we're referring to. Okay, for this video, we have what we hope will be a straightforward demonstration of conditional probability. And the problem is this. Say that we have a container that has three red balls and two white balls. And by a random selection, we arbitrarily remove a ball and it turns out to be red. If that happens, what is the probability that on the second selection, when we make, when we draw a ball out, we move a ball, that it will be a white ball? So again, this container has five balls total, three of them are red, two of them are white. We randomly select a ball and we say, suppose it's a red ball. Then what is the probability that on the second selection, we go and remove a ball, what is the probability that that will be a white ball then? So E1, that's the event that the first ball selected is red. And the complementary event, of course, would be the first ball selected is not red, which in this case is no choice. It would have to be a white ball. The second event, E2, that then designates that the second ball selected is a white ball. And its complementary event would be the second ball selected is not white. In this case, then, of course, it would have to be a red ball. Okay, so what's different about this problem is that we have two events, E1 and E2. And we want to consider the probability of their joint occurrence. selecting a red ball and selecting a white ball. But in this case, the selection of the white ball doesn't occur unless a red ball is selected. So this is our conditional probability. And the conditional event is designated like this. The red ball is selected. Then, on the second try, a white ball is selected. and the probability of their joint occurrence is the probability of the first event occurring, that is selecting a red ball, times the probability of the conditional occurrence, that is a white ball is selected provided that a red ball was selected earlier. And this is always true whether or not E1 and E2 are independent events. What we um, discussed in earlier videos is that if we had two independent events, say EA and EB, then the probability of their joint occurrence was the probability of EA occurring times the probability of EB occurring. And this is true provided that they were independent. Also what we had is that the probability of EA occurring or EB occurring if they were independent and mutually exclusive events then it was just the sum of their probabilities. This we have dealt with in, in the previous videos. This is familiar territory. Here, this always holds up when you have this conditional probability. This always holds up for the joint occurrence 
whether or not then E1 and E2 are independent events. So let's consider our problem then. The container had three red balls and two white balls. So if we reach in and we select a ball, the probability of selecting a red ball clearly is three-fifths. There's three red balls out of a total of five. So the probability of E1 is three-fifths. Now, once that happens, we've gone to the container, we randomly selected a ball, we removed it, and it happened to be a red ball. Now we've changed the composition of the container to this. So now here we have two red balls and two white balls. A white ball got smudged. So we have two red balls and two white balls now. So this is representative now of this situation. Now we're going to consider what will be the probability of selecting a white ball after a red ball was already selected. And clearly that's two fourths or one half. So the probability of, so the conditional probability in this problem is one half. So the joint probability of selecting a red ball, and we started off with three red balls, the probability of selecting a red ball and then afterwards selecting a white ball is equal to three-fifths times one-half, or that is three-tenths. And really that's, that's the end of the problem. Um, Hopefully that was a straightforward demonstration of this conditional probability event. And we can try to demonstrate it further with a probability tree. It would look something like this. Okay, we have a total of five balls in the container, three red, and two white, and event E1 was on the first draw, it turns out to be a red ball, and the probability of that happening is three-fifths. Now once we've done that, we've changed the composition um, of the balls. Now we have two red balls and two white balls. Now here the probability at this point of selecting a white ball is two-fourths or one-half. So here then we have this conditional probability that first, on the first round, a red ball was arbitrarily selected. Now on the second round, a white ball is arbitrarily selected. The probability of this, of course, is just two-fourths or one-half. So the probability of arbitrarily selecting a red ball and then afterwards arbitrarily selecting a white ball is this times this or three tenths. Now let's stop at this point. Here then on the first selection, a first random selection turned out to be a red ball. So now we have two red balls and two white balls. This conditional probability then, here we have the first ball selected was a red ball. Now the second ball being selected is also a red ball. And the probability of that happening, of course, again, is just two-fourths or one-half. So the probability of first selecting a red ball on the first try and selecting a red ball again on the second try is also three-tenths. Now, let's suppose that 
on the first selection it turned out to be a white ball which we designate that as E1C. E1 was the event that on the first selection it turns out to be a red ball. E1C would be it's not a red ball or in this case it has to be a white ball. Now here then the probability of this happening there's two white balls out of five balls so that would be occur the probability of two-fifths. So now we've changed the composition here. Now we have only one white ball and three red balls. Okay, now here then we're saying with this, what's the probability of again selecting a white ball? Remember E2, event E2 is selecting a white ball. So here the conditional probability is event E1C, select a white ball on the first draw. Now on E2, select a white ball again on the second selection. That's going to occur the probability of one-fourth. So the probability then of selecting a white ball and then selecting a white ball again is two-fifths times one-fourth, that's going to occur at the probability of one-tenth. Now, and remember, on the second draw, the complementary event, E2C, would be it's not white, or therefore a red ball. So, here now, we have, after the first selection, it was a white ball. Here we have this composition, three red balls, and one white ball. Now, the probability then, if the first selection was a white ball and the second selection is a red ball, this would be three-fourths. Now, the joint probability of first selecting a white ball and then a red ball is two-fifths times three-fourths, or again, that's three-tenths. So these here cover all the possible different scenarios. And notice that when you add their probabilities up, it, of course, adds up to one. Three-tenths plus three-tenths plus three-tenths plus one-tenth. So that's it for this problem. Uh, we'll try to have a couple more videos uh, that again address this issue of conditional probability and maybe some problems that are um, a little bit more difficult. We try to illustrate the principle by using a straightforward example, um, but definitely come back, join us for some more videos, and let's see if we can solve some more problems.